In the next step we asked what role does coding and modulation play here? In the IEEE A2.11a standard you can use different uh, coding and modulation schemes which result in physical da data rates from 6 megabits up to 54 megabits. Here we measured the packet loss rate during one day over different channels, channel 44, 48 and 52 for 6 megabits physical layer rate, 36 megabits physical layer rate and 54 megabits physical layer rate. In the top picture you can see that for example 36 megabits has almost zero packet loss all the time while 54 megabits has significant amount of packet loss during some periods of the day. So the key observations from these experiments are that the channel might work fine at 6 megabits but it can be very lossy at higher rates and if that is the case that can vary over time. The implications for channel assignments are that one should measure the channel at the later to be used bitrate. So if we measure the channel at 6 megabits, we do not know what is the performance we can get at 54 megabits per second. And also that gives a hint that rate selection interacts with channel assignment. The next question we ask is, do channel distance and ACI effects correlate with each other? ACI, also adjacent channel interference, is caused by energy on channels that are adjacent in the RF spectrum or close by in the RF spectrum. ACI is very serious when the receiver is close to a transmitter on the adjacent channel. This is depicted in the picture below. So here we have one receiver, which is uh, the card uh, B2, and we have a sender, which is the card B1, and the sender has a much higher power than here, than the received signal on B2, and thereby the ACI is very crucial here. Actually, ACI should not happen in a large extent in A2Do.11a, because in that standard, the channels are defined in a non-overlapping uh, non -overlapping way. Later I will talk about channel separation. It is important to note here that when I talk about channel 36 and channel, channel 40, I mean a channel separation of one. Those are the two close by channels in the A standard. In practice, it has been reported that in the A standard, channels are not orthogonal. In the experiments we did, we changed the transmission power at node A and changed the channel on link 2. By that, we get different signal strengths on the first link and we also get uh, different channel distances. In the picture here, you can see the normalized aggregate throughput for our setup when we send data from node A to node C for different channel separations, that means different, uh, different channels on link B and different transmission powers on node A. As you can see here, if we increase the transmission power on the first link, we get a we get lower impact of ACI. So if we have a very high transmission power, for example, 14 dBm on the first link, that means we get a good signal reception on the middle node. We only need a channel separation of two to get full aggregate throughput. However, if we have a very weak first link, for example, when using only five dBm transmission power here, we need a channel separation of at least four to get full throughput. So the key observations from this experiment is that the impact of ACI largely 
depends on link qualities. And there is no simple correlation between the impact of ACI and the channel distance. The implications here are that transmission power control can help to mitigate the impact of ACI. And that simple schemes for channel assignment, for example, use at least a channel distance of two will have low performance in practical scenarios since, since other factors impact their performance as well. So what now happens if we put it all together? We use the same experimental setup as before and we measure the aggregate throughput for the network on different combinations of channels. We did that for different physical layer rates. Here I show the results for 6 megabits and 54 megabits physical layer rate. The pictures are read as follows. If you go diagonally down, you have the co-channel interference case. That is when link AB and link BC have the same channel. So the channel distance is zero here. Here, we leave one at, uh, at for example, 36 and put the other link at, uh, at channel 40 with that getting a channel distance of one. When looking at the results here, one can see if we use a channel distance of four, for all cases here, we get 99 or 100% of throughput. However, when doing that at 54 megabits physical layer rates, the results look quite different. Here, we can get up to 96 or up to 99% of throughput, but also as low as 35% of throughput. Here, the channel distance gives much less information about the throughput that can be achieved. The key observations here are that for a 6 megabits uh, physical layer rate, the channel distance is a fairly good predictor of the achievable throughput. For higher physical layer rates, the result is much less predictable. But one thing needs to be noted here, if you look at the, at the absolute throughput, the higher physical layer rates are always better in our case. The implication that we see here is that for a predictable behavior, you should use lower physical layer rates. What are the conclusions for, uh, for, us for designing channel assignment algorithms? So when using simple models, you can be uh, misled very easily, as there are so many factors which determine if a channel assignment is good or not. When designing an algorithm, one should rely on as few assumptions as possible and instead measure as much as possible. And even in a very simple scenario, channel assignment can be very complicated, as has been shown in the examples before. Thank you for listening to this screencast. Visit our webpage http www.cow.se slash cowmesh.